Greetings Earth Leaks and welcome again back to the Earth, our mud fossil Gaia. First boots on the ground video. This is exciting. Right now we are driving up to Cocopelli's Dragon. In Cocopelli's Dragon. Could be the dragon that looks like the Cocopelli monster. We are headed right up to his face right now. So we're going to go, we're going to start up here in the Coyote Mountains Wilderness area and try to make our way over to the Kitt Peak Observatory up here. And yeah, so the a lot of the places, they're still closed. You know, I looked in to go and to see the cave itself, which they say Aitoy still resides in, um, but of course with everything going on right now, it's not an option. Um, so we're going to get as close as we can. You know, if I'm going to do a video about the creature, I might as well do a video about the creature on the creature, right? So here we go. This is exciting. see the turtle. <laughs> okay, one of his flippers it looks like comes out here. Another one is under his head here. Okay, there's his head. His other flipper is right here. And there we have a turtle. Why is there a turtle lying here in the middle of the desert, right across from a big Naga dragon? I think I figured out why. There's also an elephant right here. I've looked at this mountain before thinking it was an elephant, and then when I got up close, sure enough that looks like an elephant might even be the baby elephant right here next to it. You can see the trunk coming down the front here. And on the back of these elephants you can usually see a really good um, little indentation where their tail falls down there. Um, this guy's got it real good. Almost all of Niven's elephants you'll see. You can see the tail there. So we have an elephant on this side, a turtle on this side, and when I came home and started looking again, I found a bird man right by the elephant and the turtle. Let me give you a little outline here. And I, I'm calling him a bird man, um, not because I see a beak and stuff. I mean, there probably is sort of a beak. You can see the rib cage here really well. You can see one leg comes down here, another one here. And he has these big, beautiful wings. I've looked at these feathers before trying to find a bird over here. And I think what this is, is a bird man or eagle man. Or, what would a bird man have to do with a naga lying right across the street? Well, apparently, naga's biggest rival was Garuda. And Garuda 
was an eagle man and you will usually see him standing on, you'll see him standing on a turtle or an elephant or a turtle under one foot and an elephant under the other. So I think that's why we have a turtle, an elephant, a giant bird man lying right next to a toy or Se'i or Elder Brother. This guy has a huge ancient story that goes along with him. And the reason I call him a Naga, he's obviously like a feathered serpent being with the face of a man. And with all these spiky things coming off of his head, of course, I was thinking Kokopelli, you know. Um, and I did a lot of research into who Kokopelli is. And that is a whole other rabbit hole of its own. This guy is the creator of the Tohono O'odham people. Not just the Tohono O'odham people. He is supposed to be the creator of all people. And I'm going to share with you a few of the stories that the Tohono O'odham and the Pima tell of him. And then I'm going to share with you a few of my own thoughts on what may have really happened here. So let's start with Itoi. Who, who is Itoi? And why is he lying here as a dragon? They also say he lives. He came back to life and now lives in a cave just below this mountain peak. So he died, he came back to life as an old man, and he moved into his old body. They say he still lives there. There are very recent stories of Itoi coming out to help the Tahona Onam. I'll share with you the most recent one that I know of. And let me just tell you about this guy. Because he has quite a story to share. So the short wiki version that you'll find goes a little something like this. The world was made by Earthmaker, out of the dirt and sweat which he scraped from his skin. The flat earth met the sky with a crash like that of falling rocks, and from the two was born Aitoi, the protector of the Papagos. He had light hair and a beard. Aitoi and Earthmaker shaped and peopled the new world, and they were followed everywhere by Coyote, who came to life uncreated and began immediately to poke his nose into everything. In this new world, there was a flood, and the three agreed, before they took refuge, that one of them, who should emerge first, after the subsidence of the waters, should be their leader, and have the title of Elder Brother. It was Earthmaker, the creator, who came forth first, and Aitoi next, but Aitoi insisted on the title and took it. Aitoi brought the people up like children, and taught them their arts, but in the end he became unkind and they killed him. But Aitoi, though killed, had so much power that he came to life again. He then invented war. He decided to sweep the earth of the people he had made. He needed an army for this purpose. He went to... He went underground and brought up the Papagos. They live in a land scattered with imposing ruins which belonged to the Hohokam, the people who are gone. Aitoi drove them, some to the north, some to the south, Aitoi had a song for everything. Though his men did the fighting, Aitoi confirmed their efforts by singing the enemy into blindness and helplessness. Aitoi has retired from the world and lives a little old man in a cave below Baba Kuvari Peak. 
Toy is only one of many names this trickster creator god goes by, and we can find the same stories retold across the Americas, with slight name changes and geographical landmark changes. As difficult as it has been to track down the real story, it is evident that we have a masterful trickster at play here. It is said he has many enemies, and that is why he built this maze. And it is in this cave of winding passages where he is said to live now. He is the man in the maze. So the Coyote Wilderness was not an option, and unfortunately neither was Kit Peak, but we got as close as we could and ended up out here on the tips of his feathers. So we got as close as we could, and let me show you what we found out here. Hot? It's a feather. Look at look at the striations. Do you see what I see? That's a feather. That is a dragon feather. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. With crystals just He would have glistened like the sun, man. Yeah, that's volcan That's volcanic. That it it oozed out of a volcano this way. With straight, perfect lines. Look at the straight yeah. line like that. Mm -hmm. There, there. And look, not only is it a straight line, but it continues down through the whole rock. And then you got straight lines. Wow. And that's why it falls apart in the squares that it does. Because it's in sections like that where we're made in layers. Wow, look at this. Feather of a dragon. somewhere around here. <laughs> yeah, all, all up and down his body too. Um, all up and down the feathers. There are, they call them volcanic dikes. And this is exactly what they are. They're these really long veins that run all the way up and down his body. And uh, they say they're volcanic dikes. I guess that there was super, super, yeah, super perfect cracks in the mud that where the volcano oozed a straight line into, and then it um, was supposed to have hardened at different rates to create something similar to a wall. <laughs> Thank you. 
sa as. Be here. There's a cave within there. It's closed right now, but he's supposed to live in the cave. <laughs> 